you mentioned that you're good at sales. Um, there was oh, a yeah. great, there's a great book I read called To Sell is Human. And it really unpacked the idea that every time you open your mouth, you are selling an idea, a concept. You're talking to your wife or your spouse about, you know, should we go to the, you know, one place or not? It, it's, it's a constant skill. And um, in fact, there's a, there's a gentleman that we both know. His name is Michael. His last yeah. name is Strong. Yeah. And he talks about the importance of sales as a superpower. You sell yourself every time you're talking to someone. You do, um, and I, having interacted with you for this, you know, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, I can sell that you know how to sell yourself. That then can carry you in enormous ways across your, across your life, you know, your lifespan. So mm -hmm. that is a wonderful power, wonderfully powerful skill, and it's undervalued in the majority of, of academic settings. Yeah, I think so. Well, and I agree with what you're saying. I mean, anything that you're, whenever you're having a conversation, you're always going to be kind of biased, you know? You're like, oh, you want to go to Chili's or Taco Bell? You know, Taco Bell has a sale of some kind, or, you know, right. Chili's, you know, we can go to Chili's, or ooh, we can go to Taco Bell, you know, like, whatever it is, you know, you always got some bias of some kind. <laughs> it's always but, Taco Bell, by the way, for me. Oh, man, Chili's, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, so yeah. I want to I want to kind of um, so one of the things in the background of my mind all the time is so I I think you know Emma you you are you are doing extraordinary things um, I think it's wonderful and I think of it as tr cultural capital that was kind of transmitted from your parents and I would speculate that if you had precisely zero formal schooling you would be pretty much the same person you are right now that is that. Most of, you know, all the characteristics that Matt and Kath have been asking you about, oh, I learned that in the seventh grade curriculum. No, I learned that by going out and doing things and talking to people. And so, you know, I, I think of social mobility and, you know, Matt, um, you know, has been with nonprofits and big foundations and Matt has spent, I won't play with it, Matt, but you've spent a lot of other people's money on making the world a better place. Half a billion and, dollars. Exactly. And so for me, it all comes down to people think it's school. No, no, no. It's cultural capital. And if we could help millions of kids have the same kind of cultural capital that Emma has, they don't need any school. They don't need any university. You know, the whole school system to me, it seems like this parallel universe that people believe in. It's almost like this, um, I don't know, I think it's this weird superstition. Belief in schooling and university is a superstition as far as I'm concerned. And if we understand that no, certainly again, for doctors, mathematicians, it's great. So that's, that's maybe 20 to 30% of the population at most. most at but for most. like 70% of the population, it's really cultural capital.